we're mostly going to talk about like cold calling and stuff, right? We're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to make this about, you know, the whole cold calling system. I know, I know Dusty already switched fields after he came over here with, but it's fine, but he's still, I mean, dude, as soon as he was ready to like Georgia open back up this week, he ran to the field and started Man, knocking. I don't blame him. He crushed it. Go on. Like, hey, listen, tell us salespeople. I, man, I, I will give them the biggest hug and pat on the back because they are a special, special breed of people that can sit there and do that. So I've got the respect. utmost respect for them. Yeah. It's, awesome. yeah. it's, it's, um, it's an amazing thing that they're doing. Um, yeah. And I don't know how they do I don't know how they do it. I'm doing okay. And I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Like, I went back and I looked at my numbers and I mean, I didn't do, I, I felt like I did a lot worse. Yeah. Um, but in the midst of, you know, still trying to run my every day and trying to take care of agents and keep them up and going and get them trying to try to switch over to telesales. I'd actually went back and looked and I'd ordered uh, 40 of the SEO long form leads. Mm -hmm. And call, I probably called through about uh, 30 or 35 of them. But of that, only 18 actually answered the phone. And of those 18, I sold 11 of them. So it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. the numbers were, were there. Yeah. 11 out of 14 is not, 11 out of 40 is not bad whatsoever. But it just, I mean, good God, man. It's like when you're sitting there talking to them, it's like if I was sitting in front of you, this would have been a done deal in 30 minutes. Yep. But now I'm sitting here pushing on almost an hour and a half, yep. you know, trying to get to that point. And it wasn't like it was a hard sell or anything. I just kind of went through my script and did my thing, but like, holy moly. Yeah, there's just so much more hesitancy and resistance and it's so much harder to get people to understand it when you don't have anything visual. It's, it's yeah, I get you. Yeah. So. Well, Dusty, right. we've been recording the whole time, so welcome back to the insurance panel. Uh, wanted to get you a little loosey-goosey before, uh, before we really started recording, but we've been recording the whole time. Welcome back, guys. Uh, if you already read the title, I don't know what we're going to call this, uh, but we have a door-knocking, a cold door-knocking machine. Um, yeah. Six months ago, probably seven months, I don't know how long it's been, Dusty, since me and you know each other. Most people didn't even know who you were. But now everybody knows who you are online. Once you start, you're like talking to me, you're like, Matt, what do I do? I said, post this, post that. And now all of a sudden, everybody knows who you are. But for those that don't know, Dustin Edwards or Dusty Edwards, he goes by Dusty, lives in Georgia. All, and he's a Seminole fan. You can see back there. Um, final expense monster producer and cold door knocking extraordinaire and we figured it'd be a perfect time to do this episode because we think who knows that we're starting to see the downward spiral of COVID-19 so people are starting able to go back out in the field and we were just talking about it right before this we hate the phone I like the field yeah. Nick, Nick can't wait to go back in the field wait. and Dusty is pumped up to be back in the field. How much have you already done this week in the field? Uh, this week I only had Monday and Tuesday I could, I could get out, but I'm sitting mm -hmm. a little over 6,000 for uh, Monday and Tuesday. So Perfect. And about 4,500 of that was on Monday. Wow. Yeah. That's gangster, bro. Um, go ahead. I'm, ex Nick. I'm expecting it's going to be a really good time. To, to be selling face to face final expense once we get back out there um i am i'm literally every single day checking to see if i'm allowed to go back out it's uh i can't wait yeah i mean i know uh nick and and dusty used to work at the same company not the same company they worked for the same company mm -hmm. at one point in time and i we were like i was like you want dusty on i was like you're like i gotta vet this guy and after about 35 minutes you're like this guy is yeah exactly who i think he is yeah no it, well because we come from the same place you know we have the same history and the same background um and the thing is like i personally would not recommend that people getting into final expense go in with the plan of cold calling but sometimes you don't have leads you mm -hmm. may not have purchased any leads for the last several weeks um because of COVID, and you need to get out there and go start making money yesterday because you haven't been working for a month and i know there's a lot of you out there that are in that situation um and i think this is the perfect time to talk to somebody about 
what it's like to cold call. I know that's how I got my start was completely cold calling 100% of the time. Um, I know that's how Dusty got his start and was still doing that mostly up until like, like January, something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. So like, I know when we first talked, the first time Dusty and I talked was around Thanksgiving of last year. And that was, he was still like going out and cold calling when we talked. So, um, yeah. So like, like, let's get into it. Like, um, you want to give us some background on how you learned to cold call and talk about the, talk about the system and all that, or I don't know where you want to start. Um, well, I'll, I'll kind of go back and just say how I even got into it to begin with. If uh, yeah, you know, sure. ended up in insurance, uh, I was a cabinet maker by trade. I did that since I was 15 years old and, uh, actually wound up short version of that story is I, I quit my job there and I was, it was during my college days or just got out of college rather. And I was living with three other roommates that I had just moved in with probably about two months prior. And, uh, Apparently, they were in the process of, had been on notice that they were possibly going to be evicted, but didn't bother to tell me that when I moved in. So the day that I actually quit my job uh, from the, at the cabinet shop, I got back to the apartment and they were all sitting in the living room and said, uh, by the way, we're being evicted. So I'm like, great, I'm going to be jobless and homeless. So when, are we, when is this happening? And it was uh, by this weekend. So that night, I actually went to my, who's now my wife, but girlfriend at the time, went to, uh, with her, one of, uh, to her friend's house. And uh, her dad sold insurance for, for this company that we worked at. And um, anyway, he was like, why don't you come work with me? I said, what do you do? And he said, I sell insurance. And I went, nope. And he goes, well, it ain't like you got a job. So just come ride with me and watch me. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. So I went road with him. I remember he worked for about three hours, four hours. And he was like, I'm done. I was like, done? And I'm used to working 12-hour days. And he goes, yeah, I just made about 3,800 bucks. And I was like, you worked four hours, made $3,800. Sign me up. I can do this. If all you do is just ride around knocking on doors, talking to people, sign me up. I can do this all day long. So that's exactly what we did. So he signed, um, I filled out everything, went to Atlanta for a week to get licensed, then flew up to Chicago for two weeks to learn how to actually sell the insurance, and then came back. And, and the manager that I was with, uh, he actually had leads and uh, he worked with me for about a week and a half and uh, wound up having a massive heart attack. And when I called my upline, I was like, Hey, my manager's gone. Like he's not returning my phone calls. Don't know where he's at. And he said, uh, well, he had a heart attack. We're not sure when he's going to get out of the hospital. And I was like, so what am I supposed to do? And he goes, man, I don't know what to tell you. Just get out there and start knocking doors. So that's exactly what I did. The one thing that he told me, and I've never forgot it, and I've actually, I still tell agents this to this day because it's true, is there's two things you can typically depend on with, with seniors, potted plants and Cadillacs, right? So I pulled into a neighborhood and I drove down the street and that's what I looked for. And then that's exactly what I did. I parked my car, I got out, and I just went door to door to door, knocking doors. And at the end of that week, and it was the first week of me ever selling insurance, at the end of that week, he, uh, I had to call in my numbers. Didn't even know how to figure up what annualized premium was. I was just writing policies and collecting checks. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of that week, he called me up and he goes, so uh, did you ever get out in the field this week? And I said, yeah, I went out. And he goes, sell anything? I said, yeah, I sold some. He goes, how much you sell? I was like, I have no idea. He goes, well, add it up. Well, what do I add up? He goes, add all the checks up, multiply it times 12, tell me what you come up with. So I add all the checks up and I multiply it out and it comes out to be, I think it was like 5,200 AP, something like that. <laughs> right. So I'm like, uh, I sold $5,200. Or I said, it comes out to be $5,200. He goes, no, you did something wrong. Go back and do it again. Right. So I walked through and I add it all up again and I multiply it times 12 and he goes, what's the number? I was like, 5,200. He goes, there's no way that you sold $5,200 with no leads, just knocking on doors. I was like, well, that's what the number keeps coming up to. And sure enough, that was my first week ever knocking on doors. And I was like, man, if this is all there is to it, I can make a career out of this. Now, it was a lot easier when I had leads. Right. But eventually, you know, as those leads kind of run out or, you know, you always end up and every agent out there knows it. We, we can drop you know, $1,200 in leads, $1,500 in leads, $2,000 in leads in the area. And those leads are just horrible. I mean, it's just, 
it seems like we got the bottom of the barrel stack of leads and now we're stuck with 30 or 40 leads that we need to try to work. But, you know, we need to try to get to another area and now we're having to go try to drop leads in another area. And what's the time lapse in between working these crap leads and before these new leads come in. So door knocking absolutely has its, has its niche. Yeah. Well, you have an interesting way of doing it. And I remember talking to you, I was like, man, that makes so much sense. The way that you do it is you drop leads, but then you get the list, the mailing list that's sent out. Mm -hmm. So the 900 and let's call it 85 people that didn't fill out a card. That's you give, Yeah. You give those other leads to your agents. You're like, here, you take these. I don't want these. Correct. You're going and knocking the 985 people that didn't fill out the card. And your thought process is this, and this, I want to make this very clear for people. They're the people that didn't fill out the card. So he's not worried about any one of us, Nick or I, coming behind him and trying to replace that policy because guess what? They're not ever going to fill out another card again. They'll never fill out, they haven't filled out a card and they'll never fill out another card. So the chances of that falling off the books. <laughs> are very slim and it's, it's almost, yeah it, well and it's the, it's almost the opposite of the philosophy that that i work with which is you know i i don't try to put my own feelings on people that i go see i don't try to think you know with my wallet um or with what i would do and what works for me because i would never be the type of person who would fill out a card and walk it out to the mailbox and stick it in the mailbox um, so when I'm going down and sitting with people, I'm sitting with people that I know are the types of people who are going to fill out a card and mail it in. Um, and everything that I do is tailored to that because I've learned what type of person that is and, and who they are and what they do and how they think. But you're really going to see an in the same demographic, but an entirely different type of person within that same demographic, same age, same basic income, but they think about things differently. They're maybe a little bit savvier. They're, um, they've maybe done a little bit more saving. They've got a little bit more put together because they're not the type of person who's going to just go fill out a card and hope that somebody helps them out. Yeah. So my, and kind of adding on to what Matt said with it, it's, and that's exactly what I do. So if I, if I, because in Georgia, you can go ahead and guess, and, and again, other states are similar to the same number. In Georgia, you've only got on direct mail uh, response anywhere between uh, one, one point, if you get a 1.25% uh, return, if you get 12 leads out of 1,000, mm -hmm. you've done really good. I mean, I've had leads where I've dropped, uh, matter of fact, I remember one year, and this probably been four or five, six years ago, I dropped $3,000 in leads, $3,000 in leads, and I got back about a hundred leads. So about three, six thousand pieces. Not three thousand, yeah. yeah, not three thousand leads, three thousand dollars. Yeah. So got back about a hundred leads. My lead return on that was I think it was like 0. 0.72, 0. 0.6 something. It was an absolutely horrible return. So, but my thought process behind it and and how I kind of even decided to start transitioning into it was the fact that with these people that are that do fill these leads out and send them back in. It's, it's the same people that's going to fill it out for you, the next person, the next person, the next person. So the mindset behind it is it's almost like the last agent in is the next agent out. Follow me? As far as you're going to go in and sell them today, and then they're going to fill out another lead card two months from now, and then Matt's going to come in behind you, and now he's replacing your business. So it's just this constant, if the client can save a dollar or two, then they're going to save a dollar or two. And these agents are trained well enough to say, Hey, Ms. Jones, you're, you know, here's an extra couple of dollars you can save. And then it comes back to if they can't save them money that, you know, at that point now the agent has to figure out another way to make their, their service seem more fitting for that client to move them out. So it's a constant battle mm -hmm. between you, Matt, and every other agent that's coming in there. So my mindset is, well, let me just, whatever battles I can get out of the way that I don't have to deal with, then those are all eliminated. So now it's, and they're also, they're not jaded because these clients have also kind of throughout the years, they've been, they've self-taught and programmed in their mind that this is the stuff that they can say will get you out of their house and off their porch and, you know, on down the road. So they have this, this internal dialogue that they already know that, you know, they can kind of get you out of their house and down the road with these other 998 people that I'm seeing, 
they're not jaded. They don't have people showing up on their doorstep every day. So to have somebody that shows up out of the blue, knocking on their door, talking about, hey, Ms. Jones, you received a notice in the mail, you know, three or four weeks ago, just let you know about the updates and changes to whether it be Medicare, the updates and changes to the Medicare Extra Health Social Security Benefits Program, or, hey, Ms. Jones, you received a notice in the mail three or four months ago about the state regulated final expense benefits. Uh, I'm licensed with the state of Georgia. So going that route to have somebody show up at their house that's actually saying, look, I'm following back up because you never filled that form out and sent it back in. Well, to them, now it's important. They're going, dang, now somebody's showing up at my house. I've never had anybody show up at my house before because they've never filled these cards out. But I don't have to worry about somebody replacing me. So my persistence these typically stay in the neighborhood of anywhere. I think my lowest persistency is 97.9. Um, and I've got one company that my persistency, my 18 month persistency with them was a hundred percent. So it's just, nobody's coming behind me. Nobody's replacing my business. I guess, I guess the thing is, is most agents that might even be watching this are scared to even go door knock with a lead. So it'd be even harder for them to figure out what am I going to like? How do you shake those nerves off from, I'm about to walk up to somebody has no clue that I'm coming. No idea. Here's with again, what is your approach to it? Because if I'm walking up there as an insurance agent and I'm coming just my intent, which again, we're all insurance, you know, we're our job is to sell insurance. So if my intent is to go up there and I'm, you know, Dusty Edwards with ABC Insurance Company, then yeah, that's going to be a little bit tougher sell to get inside that house because you're already telling the client at the door, I'm an insurance agent, right? Mm -hmm. So my whole approach when I come to the door is, hey, Miss Jones, I'm Dustin Edwards. I'm licensed with the state of Georgia. About three weeks ago, you received a notice in the mail about the, which I do, I'm getting into Medicare, so I'm going to use the Medicare uh, side of it. Um, as far as the extra help, uh, helping them apply for the extra help, which you, by the way, kind of side note, you do not have to be have your AHIP training to be able to work with clients on the Medicare extra help to help them free up the 144 or 60 that's been deducted out of their Social Security. You do not have to be sub for Medicare to do that. Nope. Uh, so my approach is, is hey, Ms. Jones, I'm Dustin Edwards. I'm licensed with the state of Georgia. About three or four months ago, you received a notice in the mail uh, let you know about the updates and changes to the Medicare Extra Help Social Security Benefits Program. That form you received in the mail was letting you know that if you do qualify for assistance, you may no longer have to pay the 144.60 every month. My job is to come out here and meet with you to see whether or not you may qualify for assistance. Right? At that point, one of two things are going to happen. Either it's going to be a, okay, come in, which typically it is, or they're going to ask another question. What kind of changes? Which again, now all I'm doing is going back and repeat. Well, Ms. Jones, again, if you recall that notice you received, it informed you that, that right now you have $144.60 a month be deducted out of your social security check. If you do qualify for assistance, you may no longer have to pay for that or have that deducted from your social security check. My job is just to do a quick review of your benefits to see whether or not you may be eligible. And then of course, we're gonna go through any other insurance you may be uh, paying for, your private insurances, to see if we may be able to reduce down any of those costs. Right. And then I'm taking a step forward. I'm getting in the house. I just need to get past that six inches mm -hmm. right? because it doesn't matter what type of rebuttal they get at the door. I get past that six inches. Mm -hmm. Their attitude changes. Yeah. I, I always say the hardest part is like, they're the meanest person in the world right here. And they're the nicest person right here. Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. I kind of, I've, I've told uh, some of my agents when they're like, man, I'm struggling at the door. You know, I, I use, I've got two boxers, right? And, and the mailboxer, he, if, if you come to my door and I've got a, a, our other house, we had a glass door and it's got the, the two locking mechanisms in the door, right? If he saw you coming, he would shoot through the house. All four legs would hit that glass door. And I've had to replace the bolts in the door three times to where, how he's not shattered the glass, I have no idea but he had snapped those bolts off and I've had to replace them three times. Now he's going nuts and you on the outside of the door, you think he's fixing to rip your head off if he can get to you. Right. But I can really open the door up to where he now has full access to you. And that quick his attitude changes, right? You could break in my house 
and he's going to go nuts while you're trying to get in. But the second you get in, he's like, ah, you got it. You're good. Right. Right. It's the yeah. same kind of mindset with these clients that, you know, regardless of the rebuttal, and it doesn't matter if it's a lead, it doesn't matter if it's a door knock. So the thing is that to go back to what you just asked me a while ago, if they're scared of one, even having a lead, much less trying to just cold call off of having nothing. But, and again, on my data list, when we say that I'm cold calling, let's, let me kind of clarify that uh, with that as well. I'm using a data list. Mm -hmm. So I have the client's name and I have the client's address and also, you know, have what their age is and their data. I mean, excuse me, male, female, right? So those are the four pieces, uh, name, address, uh, male, female, and what their age is, right? So I can at least approach the door knowing who it is that I'm fixing to ask for, who I'm fixing to talk to. So it's not just riding down the street and just knocking on the door, not knowing who it is. But I've also done that as well, right? But again, having that information, the client themselves do not know that you don't have more information on them than just what you've got. Yeah, and just to just to clarify, so that list, as a data list that you have, for those that might be watching this that might be coming out of COVID-19 that can go back in the field that may not have the cash flow to buy some leads, how much does that data list cost you? 35 bucks per 1,000. 35 bucks. And you can get those. I mean, most lead vendors who sell you leads will also sell you their lists. Correct. Correct. They will so ask if, you at the tail end of it, do you want the data list as well? Yeah. When so. I switched into doing uh, the senior market, the final expense for the last seven years that I've been on this side of the business, my total lead cost per year has been 70 bucks. And I'll typically average anywhere between 300 to a little over four. Hundred thousand dollars a year of annualized premium, seventy bucks, and that's all final expense premium, or is that counting the single premium and all that stuff too? No, so that's just final expense. So last year, um, I did right at one point two million dollars on nice. my pen and pad, um, and four hundred. I think it was like four twelve. I had to give. I think it was somewhere just under four hundred. Just just say four hundred for easy numbers. Uh, but it was 400,000 on single premium and 877,000 on, uh, excuse me, 400,000 on final expense and 877,000 on single premium. single premium, which those are solid numbers. guys. Those are really good. Yeah. Um, so I, I haven't done final expense the way that you're doing final expense, but I know I've done um, a lot of cold calling and, and canvassing um, in my time. I know, I had certain metrics that the company gave me to help keep me on track. Um, what are you looking at? Like, I know I would try to introduce myself to 30 people a day um, every day that I was out in the field is when you're working off these data lists, are you looking at the same types of numbers or what are you looking at? Um, I never really had a baseline to it. It was, I knew that my goal every day was getting five houses, mm -hmm. right? So if I had to knock 30 doors to get in five houses, then mm -hmm. I'm not 30 was getting five houses. If I had to knock five houses to get in five houses, then it, 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 that's exactly what it was. But at the end of the day, if I knocked, if I'm not my presentation that I've got down and I've got other agents I trying to do the exact same thing. If we knock 10 doors and 10 people answer the door, we were getting in eight, eight to nine of them. Worst case, nice. we're going to get seven of them. Nice. But typically it was, it was eight or better. If 10 people answer the door, we're getting in eight of those houses. And nice. then it just, and then at that point, you're, you're, you know, no different than any other agent that's walking in there. You're finding the information out to see whether or not you can actually help them or not. Yeah. Well, yeah. Once you're in, you're in. That's, that's the whole thing. I know. I mean, and it's been, it's been years since I've done, since I've, since I've done cold calling, but I know it would be like, for me, my goal was to give 10 presentations uh, to make, what was it? It was 30 people a day to give uh, 10 presentations to close three. Mm -hmm. that, that was my goal. That was, and, and those were the numbers that my manager made me report back. Yeah. He'd be like, you know, and at the end of the day, every day I'd have to call in and be like, how many people did you knock and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I, I do wanna give the caveat for those that might be watching this that might be considering, hey, that sounds awesome, a hundred or, you said 70 bucks to write mm -hmm. three hundred to $400,000 in annual premium, the ROI on that is insane. Correct. I would love to do that. 
there's a time factor in there. There's, there's in insurance, it's, you're going to save a lot of money and spend more time, or you're going to save a lot of time and spend more money. That's your lead cost. Do you spend more time knocking on those doors than you would buying Absolutely. leads and going to them? Right. I, I don't want people to get the thought process that you're out there for 20 hours a week, banging a couple of doors and making 400 grand a year. That's not how it works. Right. Here's, here's what, and I'm going to say this, and this needs to be uh, for anybody that from the, and it doesn't matter if it's, if you're running leads or not, right. Before you would even consider trying to get into the door knocking approach for, for, if you have the ability to order leads, order leads. If you financially have the ability to order leads, order leads, right. Yeah. Door knocking has its without lead, just running that data list. It has its, its, its place in this market. And again, that goes back to, I just don't have the money for leads right now. We're coming out of this COVID situation. I haven't dropped leads. So once it's all over with, I know I'm going to have to try to drop, uh, or I'm going to drop leads, but it's going to take, you know, four to five, six weeks for those leads to start rolling back in. But I need to get back to work and start generating some income now. Well, this is going to allow you to get that nest egg up. But as far as, as doing the door knocking approach, if even from a running a lead standpoint or calling a lead standpoint, if you're not closing, if I set 10 appointments up off of leads and I, my close rate is not, is not at least 60%, 70%, 60% worst case, you can go ahead and assume for the average agent that's going to try to go out there and just make a career out of door knocking or at least try to get started in it, you can assume your close rate is going to be probably about 30%. Yeah, right? right. Going to yeah. have, starting out is definitely going to have a lower close percentage. Now, in saying that, again, talking about from the standpoint of actually you're dropping leads, the next person's dropping leads, the next person's dropping leads, and Miss Jones fills it out for you and the next person, the next person, the next person. The, I mean, y'all tell me the average, what would you say, real numbers, and I know that the universal number is 680 bucks AP, right? right? What would you say the average AP is, not going off of that universal number, off of your personal AP, what would you say your typical average AP is? Running leads, what would you say your typical AP? 73 bucks. I, mine right now is $77 a month. So I don't know what that, I need to see what that is per year. Give me a second. I, I need a calculator. Seven, yeah, 73 is, I know is what mine is. My spreadsheet just gives me my monthly amount, but so that's 924 is where I'm Or 876. Uh, typical average, and I looked at it numerous, numerous times because I wanted to kind of see how those numbers fall out because I was talking with agents that they ran strictly off of leads and they would have at the end of the week, they would have sold 12 policies. Mm -hmm. But yet at the end of the week, I only sold four or five, but my AP was higher than theirs. Yep. So my, my typical average uh, annualized pre or excuse me, uh, bank draft was anywhere in the neighborhood between 115 to $155 a month. Okay. So for every one, mine was typically double, but again, it's because these clients aren't seeing people. Right. So they have, they're still paying for policies that for all intents and purposes, they blew up 10, 12 years ago. Right. They're still running universal life policies, right. right. From the standpoint of running leads, how many universal life policies do you typically run across now? If you sit down with 20 people. Oh, not as many as I'd like to. Yeah. Um, I'd love to run into them. That like, was our That's what, I mean, yeah. that was where the money was at. You find somebody with universal oh, life. Oh yeah. Oh You're, yeah. Like that. Sell, Absolutely. Right? All day long, every day. In the in in the the door knocking side of it, running the data list, if I sat down with 20 people, I was typically gonna run into five, six, seven out of twenty. And it was they were way upside down on it. Way mm -hmm. upside down. Everybody is. Everybody was. I mean, if you bought if you bought a universal life policy before in the 2010, 90s? well before yeah. 2010. Anybody True. who bought a universal life policy before 2010, you're, you're going to be upside down on it. Like, right. And that we all know that that, that blow up point is what, 73, 74 years old. Oh yeah. Yep. Absolutely. When it's going to blow up. What's the age group of the clients we're meeting with? That's, that's who we're talking to. 
you know? Right. I mean, and like, I've never, I, the, the next universal life policy that I see that was sold to somebody appropriately and structured the right way will be the first, you know? <laughs> I, I, like, I, I mean, you know, no, and it's not that they can't be sold the right way. It's just, they're usually sold as discount life insurance, which is not what they're supposed to be. Correct. And so they don't work right. And then they blow up and they fall apart. And you've got almost worse than term life because you've got surprise term life, you know? Yes, that's a, surprise that's, term life. That's exactly what it is. It is though. But the, the AP only typically ended up being a lot higher uh, whenever I'm just running the data list because the people just, they're not being seen. Well, and you probably never end up in things like, I mean, not that this happens to me all the time, but I've got one client where, um, you know, I, I call him, I'm, I'm in a race to the bottom with him. You know, I, I sold him three years ago for the first time. And he took out, he wanted to have, I don't know, $20,000. He took out like $100 worth of coverage and I was replacing something, right? And so he had $100 worth of coverage. And while somebody came back behind me and they couldn't replace what I sold him because I sold him the lowest price policy possible for the amount of coverage he got. So they just sold him a smaller policy to save him money. And so I came back and he's like, well, yeah, but, but now that I'm paying this smaller amount, I don't, maybe I don't need that much. And I was like, all right, well, if you're going to pay that smaller amount, you might as well pay less for the smaller amount sell him back another policy again for the same amount that the other guy sold him, but for more coverage. And yep. then somebody comes in behind and sells him again, just a smaller policy. And we go back and do this. The guy started at $113 a month. He's taken four different policies from me over the years. He's paying $40 a month now. Right. Um, so the last in first agent out. Yeah. It doesn't happen all the time, but you know, I'm also at the same time, I'm not going to let that happen to any of my clients where, I'm going to let somebody just come in and sell them a more expensive policy for less money, you know, because it's, and that's not, you know, but you probably don't run into that. I, I don't very, very rarely. Like I said, I don't, if I have a client that if I get a email or a letter in the mail stating that, you know, typically from a you know, bank draft has been stopped. If I do get those, I, very rarely is it ever going to be because another agent came in, not to say it hasn't happened, but very rarely is it going to happen. So typically when I call the client back up, it's just, uh, hey, money's tight right now. I can't afford to keep it, so I let it go. And then it's like, well, hold on, before we do that, let's see about just taking and reducing the benefit down, mm -hmm. right? We'll surrender out a partial of it so that we can actually get the, the price point back down to what you need to do. And of course, that's typically what we do and I'm able to save the business. But again, if another agent has come in there and managed to, to weasel their way in, even though they had the relationship with me, and again, every, every one of us knows how that goes, that for whatever reason, we could have worked with that client for the last four or five years, and oh my God, they love us, and every time we come over, we can sit down and have a glass of iced tea with them. But now all of a sudden, this new agent comes out of the woods and spent an hour with them, and now all of a sudden, that's their best friend, and I just got kicked to the curb. Well, Ms. Jones, I've been working with you for five years. We'll have an our relationship. Why didn't you right. call me and say, hey, this person has, has come in and this is what they're offering. And let's see if we can find something to match that or find out why it is that you're wanting to reduce that benefit down instead of just automatically going, oh, well, I'll just take out a new policy because it's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Mm. Um, what's the most amount of production that you've done in a week? Cold door knocking. Uh, 43,200 annualized premium, 3,600 in bank draft. All final expense. All final expense. That is what some week. agents produce yearly. Unfortunately. Yep. 40, $43,000 in annualized premium on cold door knocking. I went, that was, I went 100% that week. 100% of the people that answered the door, 100% of the people let me in, and I sold 100% of the people I sat with. 23 applications that week. It's a good week. <laughs> that's a, it's a hell of a week. Yeah. Um, a, yeah. yeah uh, but now, I mean, I want to be clear, and just so people know, uh, you're really good at that. And that's something right. that you, you've been doing for 18 years. You've mm -hmm. been doing cold door knocking. But then you met me and you were like, I was like, dude, you got to get on the phone. And now you've switched over, right? right. You've, you've come well, to the dark side. With appointments. I will absolutely <laughs> okay. 100% agree with that. Life is a lot easier. With, because again, here's the thing. With appointments, 
I can sit here and I can call it up because at the end of the day, we all know what's a numbers game, mm -hmm. right? The more people I get in front of, a higher probability that I make a sell. Sure. Appointments are going to get you, get you there. So my goal is in having appointments is to have eight appointments a day. That's 32 appointments a week, right? If I've got 32 appointments a week and I sell 10 of them, I've had a dang good week, right? On the door knocking side of it, and there's definitely been those days or in those weeks to where I've gone out and I have literally knocked because now, because I'll take 120 names at a time on my mm -hmm. data list and I'll put them into a, uh, which I use Road Warrior. Okay. Uh, and I'll route them out. So it's literally 30 seconds in between one stop to the next stop. So every 30 seconds, I'm knocking on another door. But I've had days where I've literally gone out and I've knocked 30 or 40 houses and not a single soul was home. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Do you leave yeah. notes or do anything? Um, I do. On, so the way I do mine, because again, I have, I have a thousand names, mm -hmm. right? So I don't do any wraparounds until I've went through that entire list. Right. So I'll, when I say that entire list, I mean that entire 120 right. names. I'm doing right. 120 at a time. Right. So I'm going to run that list from one end to the other. The second go around, I've actually got a uh, door hanger uh, that I bought that has the first attempt, second attempt, and final attempt. Mm -hmm. which basic i mean it's a yellow card but it's a door hanger mm -hmm. and then i'll check off final attempt and i just write down the you know the client's name i'm trying to call on my name and my phone number and that's it it's very generic it doesn't give them any information but curiosity gets the cat and mm -hmm. they're going to call back just to find out what it is and of course i'm not going to answer the phone and as soon as they call and i see that number i'm immediately wrapping around and i'm going right back to your house because now i know you're home and I'll say, I mean, if you are going to door knock with leads, that's pretty much the basic process you should be using if you're door knocking with leads also. I mean, that's not even like, that's, yeah. that's just good that's, sound. That's door knocking principles. 101. Like, yeah. Do it that way. Right. So it's, but it's good to hear that because I feel like a lot of people aren't even getting that low, like getting that level of training. Like um, the longer we've been doing this show and the more we talk to people, the more I'm just absolutely shocked at how little... Uh, direction anybody's getting at all so it, it's nice that there's somebody out there that's actually you know teaching people how to do this the right way and kind of like I've said it before you know the, the way that I was taught to do things was is very old school and it's not the it's a lot of the stuff that I say and the things that I was trained to do um, is not the most modern sales techniques but it works and it's been drilled into me um, and so how much easier has your life been taking what me and you were taught. Oh my God. Like I skipped <laughs> a ton of that stuff that we learned. Oh God. And, and I train agents today off of that same yeah. mentality. Because man, I'll, I will preach it from the rooftops that, that, and I mean, I'm not gonna throw out names of companies, but that company, I mean, they have, now it was a, it was a captive model that mm -hmm. we started Yes, it was. And of course, we know that, that with captive model, you get paid to be up under that captive model, but you cannot beat the training. Nope. And that particular company, they had the training platform. And I stayed with them for four years. I probably should have left after year one, hmm. but I stayed with them for four years. And man, my life is a thousand times easier to sell on this side of the business to have yeah. you know, all the different companies that we represent now. Just getting the just getting the the drilling that they did on just how to respond to people, no matter what people say. You know, I still say stuff like, you know, it's it's not your money, it's your health that qualifies you for this. You know, um, I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll only take a minute. Isn't that true? It's the little things that they make you say over and mm -hmm. over again. Just part of my vocabulary now. One thing Dusty does, and he's starting to do it now, is he'll start shaking his hand yeah. up and down Nodding. and getting you to agree. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he like he he was like, he's like, Matt, I'm gonna get the person to start nodding. And we're like at a bar or something, and he's like talking to somebody, and he's just start yeah. doing this, and the person's like sitting there nodding their head. I'm like, this guy's crushing it over here. Right. Um, those things work. Speak those loudly and rapidly work. and with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all all that stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I forgot what I was going to say. It was going to be good, I but I forgot it. Um, I mean, obviously, Dusty, you're a, you're a door knocking legend. There's not many people that can do what you do or have the mental fortitude to do what you did or do, still do. 
18 years of that, bro, is crazy. I'll also say he said eight appointments a day for 32 appointments a week. That's also like double the amount of appointments that most final expense agents run. Mm-hmm. Like, that be because somebody has done the math of that. They're going, wait a minute, eight appointments a day. That's only 32. That's not, doesn't come out to be, I only work Monday through Thursday. Right. So yeah. I try to approach my goals Monday through Thursday. So for anybody who goes, man, this guy doesn't know how to multiply. I'm doing <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you really did 5,200 that week. You might've had her all wrong the first time. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, like seriously, and, that, and that's, I think at the end of the day, that's the other thing that, that people should be taking away from this though, is you've got to put in the work. You got to put in the legwork. You got to see the people, you got to get the no's. You got to get people saying no to you and you got to run all your numbers through. You know, if you're like, Anybody who gives 32 presentations a week, you know, give 32 appointments a week, even if you don't give a presentation, all of them, you hold 32 appointments a week. You may not put up Dusty's numbers, but you're going to do okay. Mm-hmm. Like push for eight appointments a day, you, you know, I mean, I know. Do, like do a little bit of quick math on it. This is something that when I have agents that come to me that are talking about, well, I'm only writing 50,000 a year, 60,000 a year, right? Mm-hmm. If we're, and we're going to use, you know, those, the traditional annual averages. If I've got 32 appointments a week, right. And let's say 25% close rate. Mm-hmm. And we say that's probably typical. So if I've got a 25% close rate, that means I'm closing eight appointments, right? Right. Appointments, 25% close rate. I'm closing eight of those. If we know that the, the normal average is we said about $65 a policy, right? So 65 times 12 is up to 700, is that right? 65 times 12, that's 780 annualized premium. 780 times those eight sales that I have for the week, 6,240. If I duplicate that, and let's just say that I take four weeks out of the year off, so I'm only gonna work 48 weeks out of the year, so that times 48, that's two hundred and ninety nine thousand five hundred and twenty dollars of annualized premium. Yep. Thirty two appointments sell twenty five percent close rate at a sixty five dollar average bank draft premium puts you at a three hundred thousand dollar annualized premium. So you can get stood up on half your appointments, only close half the people that you sit down with. And you still be writing six thousand a week, writing three hundred thousand dollars a year. I mean, like. And you just got to do the work. It's a lot of appointments, but it's doable. Right. So if we're 50% wrong on those numbers, mm-hmm. you're still sitting at $150,000 of annualized premium. Mm-hmm. How, many, how many agents out there that are kicking out 150000 a year? Not many. Right. You know, so not many. As long as you have a teachable system, it's doable. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You got to have something that's duplicatable. And one thing I know me and you talked about a long time ago, Dusty, or a couple months ago was Dusty, the way you're doing it with door knocking is hard to recruit off of. Cause you came to me and you're like, Matt, I want to start you know, recruiting more agents. And I'm like, he's like, I, I've, I've been doing this for 18 years and I only have a couple agents. I'm like, because nobody wants to go door knock. Like that's the toughest thing in the world to do. It's like, if you're just starting out, if you're just coming out of a rut, cool, do it for a few weeks. But what the way you were doing it was so tough, right? Although I will say, if you want to learn how to sell, Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to really learn how to sell, go cold call for six months. Mm -hmm. You will end, I mean, you will get beaten up. You will have people yelling at you. You will go through really rough times, but you will come out the other side of that a really excellent salesperson, Um, you know? Uh, better if you have somebody who can teach you how to do it, go, go find somebody who knows how you'll, your life will be easier. But even if not, you know, just start, start knocking on people's doors, you know, but you know, really the hardest part is, I mean, with the door knocking side, the only part is the door presentation. Yeah. In at the door, because again, once you get inside, once you get in, you're in. It's no different than having a lead or not having a lead. Nope. Here, even, even with me having leads now, Right. When you, when you show up at the door, you show them the lead, right. That they supposedly mm-hmm. filled out. Well, if mm-hmm. it's a Facebook lead, you don't have a lead that you can show them. Nope. If it's a telemarketing lead, you don't have a lead you can show them. Nope. Right. So I've never, even with me having leads, I don't show them anything. They just have to take right. my. Right. 
right? So yeah. where's your confidence out of the door? If I'm walking up there and I'm, and I'm timid at the door, even though I have something they filled out, well, that client's going to know it. So now they're going to be like, hey, produce something. Mm -hmm. But I'm not showing them anything. So much of this business is about how you approach this as the agent. You know, it's, it's so much about your own mindset and your attitude and what you believe Absolutely. coming into it. Yeah. How confident are you in, in your abilities and what you know? Yeah, yep. absolutely. That's all it comes down to because the client doesn't know you, man, you could be completely wrong, right? Completely wrong. And I hope to God, no agents are going out there doing that, but you could be completely wrong and you could tell this client that the sky is pink. And as long as you confidently believe that that's it, they're going to believe it too, right? right. It's no different than yourselves. When you get in there, the, the authority that you take in that sale is what's making the sale. They're buying you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's it. They're not buying the lead that you that they filled out and sent in. They're buying you. I could yep. take a hundred direct mail leads that are fresh. That they filled it out yesterday and personally drove it to my house and put it in my mailbox that I can go out there and sit with. And if I'm not confident in that sale, I'm not walking out with it. Right? Well, so. And I mean, that's why we say all the time, if you got a direct mail lead, it, I'm, I mean, I've been getting my direct mail for this whole time through COVID and, you know, and I'm, I'm using this time to get better at my Facebook lead generating. So I haven't been calling any of my direct mail leads, but I've been getting them. I've got. Uh, please don't say direct. Don't, so, don't say Facebook around Dusty. He wants me to yeah. teach him so bad. I'm so sorry. Well, Dusty. Wait, Dusty, did you, did you, did you, did you subscribe and enter yourself in our contest? I did, but see, here's the thing. I asked Murray about this for six months. Six months, I'm like, Murray, you've got to do these Facebook ads. Show me how to do it. I'm not tech savvy. Right. So he's like, ah, no problem. I'll teach you how to do it. Now, all of a sudden, six months later, he still hasn't shown me how to do it. But yet now I keep seeing where he's posted on such and such page or somebody has tagged him going, hey, Murray, thanks for teaching me how to set up and uh, start a Facebook ad. See, what you well, don't know is they started asking him like two years ago. So exactly. you just got to work your way down the list. Yes, I think getting everybody in order. Back. I don't think enough time has passed. I'll ask yeah. you again. <laughs> yeah, ask me again. You know, I've just been, I've been slowly, I've, I've been getting you to go from door knocking into appointment setting into uh, getting on Facebook. Because again, yeah. I don't even know who you were six months ago. And I started teaching you how to post on Facebook. And now you got people reaching out to you all the time. I uh, definitely flew up under the radar. I know when I came on with, uh, when, when me and you first met, it was like, who is this guy? Where has he come from? How long has he been doing this? And it's like, oh, he's been doing this for 19 years. And he he's doing $400,000 a year. And I was like, what? Who is this guy? Like, how does nobody know who this dude is? Right. Yeah. Like I did, I did no social media. I mean, I was on social media, but I've got, I've got friends that don't even know what I do. And these are people I went to school with. Yeah. Right. It's just, I didn't do social media. I, I went to work, I came home and that was about the extent of, extent of my my day well i'm i'm sure there's going to be people that are going to want to follow up video with you on how to door knock i'm almost positive and if you guys that are watching have questions and want a second follow-up video post down below mm -hmm. please follow up with dusty like teach us more or something like that and we'll bring Dusty back on for a one-on-one -on -one or maybe even a two-on-one. -on -one. Who knows? I don't want to do it. But if you enjoyed this stuff, if you found value out of Dusty being on, and Dusty, we really appreciate you being on. Yeah, you're great. Please, please subscribe, comment, and like the video. It helps so much. We have gone from 450 subscribers two weeks ago to over 700 subscribers. Y'all are awesome. And Dusty, I'm calling you out. I don't think you're subscribed. I can see the subscriber list. I don't, I don't think you're subscribed. I'm already on. I've already, I've already subscribed. I did it uh, actually several weeks ago. You can go back on there and check it. Do your little. Uh, we will. <laughs> we will. We also see. We also. So we had a recent guest on, and the moment he got off the thing, it showed up on my email. So and so just subscribed to you. And I was like, whatever. We'll let him pass. So we're going to let you pass on that one. But guys, seriously, it's been awesome. Yeah. We're wrapping up in another hour. Like just Dusty, you're awesome, dude. Over $400,000 a year with a $70 lead cost. That's insane. Yeah. Most agents couldn't even dream about doing 400,000, let alone without paying $50,000 a year in lead cost. 
And plus the single premium. The single premium stuff is nothing to be, uh, I mean, like, that's a whole maybe other we, conversation for a different day. Maybe we have to have him back on to talk about single premium oh, because man. the way he does, oh, nope, no. don't even get started, Dusty, because yeah, I don't no. go we don't all have time. <laughs> we don't have time, but that's another one. We'll, we'll save that. We'll save that for a future episode. But, like, single premium is a big deal. I love writing single premium, but I don't write nearly the volume you do. So, like, mm -hmm. that's, um, that's, that's a big deal. So, yeah, we'll talk about that soon. But, guys, it's been fun reach out to us at the insurance panel at gmail.com like the video subscribe yeah there to <laughs> Brian do your thing and subscribe like the video absolutely love it appreciate it again guys y'all have a good one see you guys Bye. see you guys <laughs>